Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, system music gets an F for not existing? It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going great. You know, Patrick, I am a simple man Uh with simple hopes and simple dreams. Uh It's a gift to be simple. (laughs) It's a gift to be free. And I truly hope, with all of my heart, that the the next Nintendo hardware... Yeah. Allows itself to have a little bit more fun than the Nintendo Switch did in its like system mm, menus. Yeah. Give us. Can we still engage in no a, fun mode? Is that okay? The, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Give us the option for themes. Sure. Right. If you don't want to have system music system wide, totally understand. It's a gift but give us the opportunity to choose a theme to free, that brings music and joy. To all of our hearts. I'm a one issue voter, and that's the issue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoever can deliver that yeah. is going to get Mark's vote. Yep. Uh, we're not saying for what office, of course, but uh, just, you know, wh- wh- whatever. Um, uh, Mark, there's a, uh, there's a list floating around of like uh, 100 best episodes of, of TV shows. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I was uh, just kind of scrolling through it. Um, and I was reminded of the episode of uh, uh, Andy Daly's review with Forrest McNeil titled uh, Pancakes, Divorce Pancakes, um, which uh, is it, the series is available on Paramount Plus. I watched the first three episodes. It is episode three and is such, it is maybe the funniest 20 minutes ever on TV. That's so crazy. That's the third episode of that series. Isn't it nuts? And it's already like paying off, it's like paying off things from the first two episodes, which doesn't feel like it should. Right, it feels like a very like kind of one-off sketch show. Um, it also feels like it should be the finale in some ways, where it would like right, like because yeah, that's interesting that it happens. So, but yeah, that's what a great episode of television. It's a great episode of television, totally worth watching in isolation uh, if you have access to Paramount Plus. The premise is uh, there's this guy reviews life experiences, and like people write in and ask him to review things. Uh, and it's always, or it's usually three three different things that he reviews. And in this episode, uh, he first has to review eating 15 pancakes, and then second, getting a divorce, <laughs> and then getting E- eating 30 <laughs> pancakes and it's just like uh it's a real like existential roller coaster and like like i said just maybe the funniest 20 minutes of television that that exists yeah absolutely worth checking out uh so just wanted to draw everyone's attention to that uh if you want to hear us talk about you know nintendo stuff <laughs> You can support us on patreon.com slash Nintendo Cartridge Society, where if you are supporting us at the 8-bit or 16-bit levels, you get access to our once-a-month episodes of miniseries like NCS Arcade. Yes, and uh, we are going to be playing Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow for September. Yep. Looking forward to having a discussion about that. Yep, we, uh, we're, we're very excited. And if you are a, uh, a free member on the Patreon, you also get access to our listener feedback episodes. So if you have thoughts about uh, Dawn of Sorrow, uh, Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, you can email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com, gmail.com, and we will incorporate your email into that listener feedback episode. Everyone can do that because it's free. Free uh, followers can get that. Um, if you are not already in our Discord, you should be in our Discord. Uh, email us. I will send you an invitation. You can hop on in there. Um, but Mark, that may be enough for right now because you and I have some more grades to give out. Um, so let's uh, let's continue what we began last week and grade Nintendo franchise performance on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> All right, we've got another 22 franchises to go through here. Um, 
if you are uh, if you're listening to this episode and you're like, hey, where was this franchise? We maybe did it last week. <laughs> That's right. Last week we talked about um, like 22 other Nintendo franchises. Yeah, I think 23 is 23 what we did last week. other Nintendo franchises. Last week we were in the classroom. This week we're still co-teachers, but now we're at home. We've removed the pencil from our messy bun. That's right. We're letting our hair flow. We're putting the Calgon in the tub. That's right. You know, we're going we're gonna to grade these. And we're enjoying one glass of wine. <laughs> it's not a problem. No. I'm just having one glass of wine while we're grading papers. Exactly. Um, I grade a little bit better when I've had a few. Mark, uh, would you... Uh, so, you know, obviously, uh, just to review, um, we last week we engaged three different grading systems. Primarily, we did the like A, B, C, D, F, right? Yep. Uh, pluses and minuses uh, uh, abound. Um, but every now and then, uh, it became a little bit more binary, um, where we had to evoke a pass-fail um, system. And then also occasionally, sometimes the check minus, check, check plus system, which is really just like a, you did the assignment either like just barely or not really or a little bit more. Um, we will apply those when we deem it necessary. That's I agree. Uh, so with the uh, no further ado, I think we're ready to dive in. Yeah, the first franchise here that we are discussing is Star Fox. I think it's telling that Star Fox Zero. And Star Fox Guard mm -hmm. killed the franchise. And yeah, despite not, Miyamoto's strong feelings for it. And not ported to Switch, one of the few Wii U games that did not make the transfer yeah, to that Switch. Is, that is a great point. Also, none of the um, GameCube game, you know, the, we, we got a couple like GameCube uh, revivals on, on Switch, but not uh, Star Fox Adventures and not Star Fox Assault. Yeah, really, Star Fox has shown up in Starlink Battle for Atlas, that, U <laughs> that Ubisoft Toys to Life game from the beginning of the generation. Mark, thank you for reminding me of that. That's so funny. Uh, and, I, and I forget it every time. Also, it makes me think that we should, uh, I mean, we gave it an A+, but the Mario RPGs also got the Mario and Rabbids games. Oh, yeah. When we I talked totally about it last week. Forgot we forgot about that. Yeah. But you're right. You're right. Well, good thing we already gave it an A+. Yeah, good thing we already did an A+. Right. Um... But yeah, so it was in that Ubisoft game as like Nintendo exclusive content for the Switch version. And then Nintendo Switch Online, you know, it has Star Fox, Star Fox 2 for the Super Nintendo and Star Fox 64 for the Nintendo 64 Online. But that's... That's it. That's the Star Fox you get. So, and, you know, while, while we're acknowledging all these games, we also have to acknowledge that Star Fox 2 is a dog, is a bad game that is not fun to play. It is a curiosity. And and really nothing else. They definitely, in hindsight, it's a good decision to let that one rest while yeah. before and then release Star Fox sixty four. Um, so what do you want to do here? This feels like a a bigger uh, disappointment, I guess, or like a. I, this feels like it's in Donkey Kong territory for me, of like a D. Well, I feel like with. Or check minus, maybe. Yeah, see, I, I, I lean towards check minus just because last week we used check minus for, like, Earthbound and Kid yeah. Icarus for... Um, well, Earthbound, we did check. Oh, you're right. Kid, yeah. Kid Icarus, we did check minus because the Game Boy game isn't on Nintendo Switch Online, which just feels like table yeah. stakes. Like, like what, what are you why doing? Not? Yeah. And at least with Star Fox, they have released uh, the, the... Three of them, yeah. Three of them. Right. But it's just, it's just not... Yeah, I mean, I, I think... I think check minus. Do you I'm, think? Do you think that's being no, too no, harsh? No, 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 no. I, I, the reason I was pausing was I think I'm good with check minus, but it's almost like yeah. After it blew up on the Wii U, I didn't really have any expectations that Star Fox was going to show up on the Switch. I'm not saying that that should change the grade. Right, I think it's right. just the reality of the situation. I just it's it is it the, has failed for so long. It's failed it's for like so long. It's tripped over its own feet. Why do they not let it fail on Switch too? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like uh, cuz uh you know DS had Command, um 3DS had the 64 remake. Um and then this just has nothing. We talked about it not that long ago. I can't remember in what context. But it feels to me like it's waiting for a F-099 type reinvention where it's like, yeah, we, I, yeah, we're figuring out something new to do with the Star Fox that you love. We're done trying to make new one like 
an entire new take on this. Which is also weird, though, because Zero is kind of a retread of uh, 1 and 64. So, like, just with a different control scheme. Yeah. I, I don't know. It is it is a, a, a franchise that is lost in the wilderness. I feel like Check Minus is generous. I feel that way, too. Is this maybe a pass-fail that they failed? It's hard to say fail because it does have those classic games on there. Sure. This isn't a codename Steam situation. This isn't a codename Steam situation. But also, like, it's hard to celebrate them for doing that. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah, check minus. Check minus it is. Uh, next up, Mario Sports non-carding category. So we're talking Strikers, Tennis. Uh, well, let's see if we can get all the, the full names of these games. Mario Tennis Aces. Uh-huh. Mario Golf Super Rush. Sure. I'd believe that. And Mario Strikers Battle, Battle League. League. Yeah. So a lot of the big uh, sports franchises covered. Still no baseball game, right? Ace is a, another beneficiary of the early Switch bump. I agree. Um, yeah. I bought Aces. It's the most Mario Tennis that I've ever played in my life. I also think that game's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a... They all had that same uh, like launch strategy of... Um, like being supported in like the weeks and months, uh, like immediately following with like new characters and new like uh, fields to play on and all that kind of stuff, but no like really meaningful DLC. I and I did not buy Super Rush and I did not play and I didn't buy Battle League either. So right. if I'm not super informed on there. For that reason, I want to give it like a B. I, I think maybe like C plus um, because I, I do think that the, these games did sort of like let the franchises down a little bit. I guess uh, also worth noting that uh, like the uh, Game Boy Color, I think uh, versions of Mario Golf and Mario Tennis are available. The uh, uh, Nintendo 64 Mario Tennis is available. Also, maybe the golf one, too. Um, so like there are classics of the of these uh, coming on here as well. I'm maybe even talking myself up to a B minus. Yeah, I'm good with a B minus. Okay. Um, I just I know that none of the like new ones like set a gold standard for like this is what these games should be going forward. And like you know, Strikers was like a little bit of a letdown. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, but none of them were disasters. And I guess I just have low expectations for Mario sports games. Hey, I think that's fair. Mario versus Donkey Kong, which we've decided to break out into its own series um, because Nintendo, I was going to say, kind of made a big deal about the remake, but they didn't make that big of a deal about the remake. I think the, the reason that I wanted it to be its own franchise in here is because uh, during the 3DS and Wii U era, they were really pushing the minis games, right? Um, there was that like uh, uh, Amiibo challenge or uh, uh, Mario and Friends Amiibo, whatever. Um, that uh, you could play on either of those platforms by tapping Amiibo and doing, like, little minis challenges. Um, and it was all over the, like, tipping stars on um, also maybe both those platforms as well. Anyway, it seemed like those games were everywhere. And then uh, not at all on Switch until this year with the remake of the original Mario vs. Donkey Kong. And that's the only none of those classic games... Uh, even though, you know, it started on um, DS, so maybe it would be uh, difficult to get the minis games. Um, but like Donkey Kong 94, which we may put in the same category mm -hmm. as Mario vs. Donkey Kong, not available on the Game Boy NSO library. Um, so the only thing we have here is the Mario vs. Donkey Kong uh, remake, which kind of puts it in the same category as Advance Wars. Right, which we gave a C+. Plus. I feel like straight C for this one is probably where I want to yeah, go. Yeah, for whatever reason, I also um, want it to grade it a little bit lower than right. uh, Advance Wars. Just because I think the expectations are different, right? Yeah. That Advance Wars, we were sort of acknowledging, like, eh, there wasn't one on uh, uh, on Wii U. Um, it's just, you know, like, they're just different levels. There are so many of them leading up to the Switch uh, of uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong that it's weird that there isn't a new one on the platform. Yeah. Metroid. Me yeah, let's have a conversation. Metroid. I think as far as Metroid goes, with the assumption that yep. Metroid Prime... Uh, four. Four 
whatever its subtitle is. Beyond. Doesn't end up being an embarrassment. Which it could be. It could be. We have room for that. And also, do we do we dock points for the fact that 4 was announced at the beginning of the generation? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I mean, it this, won't be coming out until the end? Because th- there are some worlds where I'd be like, this could be like an A-, minus, right? The uh, fact that Dread exists and came out is and huge. was good. Yeah. Plus the plus the prime yeah the prime remaster yes. which is also very good, and the fact that one two super and fusion are all available on Nintendo Switch Online is zero mission I think is not zero yet zero mission right? <laughs> no, maybe it is. Maybe yeah, it is. I think it might have just it might have come out recently. I'm I'm looking right now to um to see because oh I don't have an oh un- it is it is it zero is. mission okay. came out on June eighteenth. Uh, all right. I need to add that to my spreadsheet. Um, so I, so I think it's a great showing for Metroid. The fact that again, the dread exists, came out, was good, sold, sold successfully. In and of itself, a success story. A yes, success story. I agree. If Metroid Prime Four would kind of just be, to my mind, the icing on the cake. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I I, I agree. There is the that thing. The fact that uh, 4 is not out yet, um, and it's been, like, hanging over, does make me almost want to be, like, a, a, but also incomplete. Like, A, but you still need to turn in your final. Right. Right? Like, yeah. there, there's a huge thing dangling over it right now. Yeah, I would say a tentative A. Straight A. Yeah, I think Dread is that good. Yeah, Dread, Dread is uh, in- incredible. I, I will agree with that. Um, though I gotta say... Uh, you know, where's uh Metroid Prime Two remaster? I just, just don't think care that much. Didn't, didn't, didn't really care that <laughs> I much. just don't care. I Metroid Prime Two. I didn't. I don't remember liking that much, and I didn't like Corruption. Yeah. So I'm I'm personally not that sad to see those games not on the system. It'd be nice to have the entire Metroid series on there. But I, I mean, I would rather have uh Samus Returns. Frankly, yeah, the the remake of uh, the, the the second game that was on uh, 3ds. Uh, okay, Metroid, we're just giving a straight up A. Good showing for Metroid. Next up, and maybe we can argue about whether this even counts as a series for Nintendo anymore. Nintendo Dogs. Yeah, it doesn't even count as a series anymore. Do we have any expectation that Nintendo Dogs will be revived? I know we've had we have hopes and we have wishes. Yeah. When do you think the last Nintendo Dogs game came out? Uh, as part of the 3DS, so, I don't know, 2013? Uh, so, it, like, it, you're saying it... it a little uh, bit after launch? More, more than 10 years ago, we're saying. Yeah. Uh, looking it up now, the most recent game in the Nintendo... Oh, God, why is this harder for me to... Okay, <laughs> Nintendo Dogs and Cats, okay, counts as a different game. Uh, 2011 is what it looks like. Okay, so it was at launch... Of the 3DS, then? Great point. Yes. Or. Yeah. Yeah, just. I can't remember when the Nintendo 3DS launched. Uh, yeah, okay. So, but, but 2011, so it means that it's been 13 years since there's been uh, a, a release in the uh, Nintendo Dogs franchise. It does sort of seem like, uh, why not, though, right? Well, I think because it was so tied to that hardware yeah so specific but on the other hand why would it need to be great i mean honestly where it should have gone is mobile right um and it's kind of surprising that they never did that well as since nintendo kind of despises uh having to do mobile stuff (laughs) yeah uh, it's a good point i guess it's not super surprising but um i mean nintendogs gets a a shrug? Uh, yeah, I I don't know that it belongs on the list. I don't think it's fair to give it a grade. I see, I see. Uh, so that's just like exempt. Yeah, I guess exempt. Okay, we are uh ex- we are exempting uh Nintendo Dogs from the exercise. That's its grade is exempt. Uh huh. Okay, great. Next up, Pikmin. Pikmin's one, two, three deluxe, and four are all available to play. On the Nintendo Switch. So last week we were talking about Fire Emblem and I, how I felt that that series squandered its momentum 
And I feel like the opposite is true for Pikmin. Yes. Nintendo has had a concerted effort to build up Pikmin, and I would say that they were successful in that goal. I think so, too. And it's, it's, it is, like, uh, there's an interesting component here where, like, um, Nintendo has made an effort to bring the Pikmin games forward uh, multiple times, right? Um, the... Uh, the first two games were GameCube games, and then they were like tweaked with new play control on uh, Wii, um, and then the third one came out on the Wii U, and now like they're all available to play on Switch. Um, it's just kind of a remarkable little thing. I mean, it certainly can't hurt that, that Pikmin is Miyamoto's special little baby. Yes, a absolutely does not hurt at all. Um, also doesn't hurt the franchise that four rules? Still got to play it someday. I, I love it. It's so good. Um, yeah, I mean, for, for me, this is like an A, possibly A+. plus. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what more you could ask for from Pikmin the, yeah, than great, uh, great doing point. what it did. So I'm, I'm fine with an A+. Plus. Uh, of course, everyone is going to be asking, where is Hey Pikmin? Right? Right. Right. Bring over Hey Pikmin. Um. Also, we got to shout out Pikmin Bloom, as always. Got to shout out Pikmin Bloom. Every time we're doing a, a Pikmin franchise, uh, you know, sort of, uh, every time we're doing an overview. Um, all right. Pikmin gets an A+. Plus. Moving on. Pilot Wings. <sighs> pilot Wings. How do you feel about the Pilot Wings series generally? I love the music. <laughs> yes. But I don't think they're that fun to play. I also don't think they're that fun to play. And, like... Sort of the core premise of those games is like, these are difficult to control. Good luck. <laughs> right? Right. And, and hey, look at the cool things graphically that these systems can do. Right. The Super Nintendo when it launched, the Nintendo 64 when it launched. I never played Pilot Wings Resort, the 3DS kind yeah. of like entry that's kind of, that's I. like a Pilot Wings game that's also a spinoff of the Wii Sports Resort game. and Right. Um, and you know, but the first two Pilot Wings games are available on Nintendo Switch Online. Um, and uh, uh, Pilot Wings sixty four is one of the games that like benefits from an improved frame rate. Um, remember that there's like this oh, right. this thing happening with some of the uh, uh, NSO games. Um, so like, it's like kind of fun to play it, but it's I mean, this feels like a quintessential check. Yeah, to uh -huh. me, M much like the uh, our Earthbound series, uh, where like. Obviously, our expectations are, like, way lower. If they released a new Pilot Wings game, we'd be like, what? <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I think that they have fulfilled the brief. Yes. I, I, I will agree with that. Check. All right. Next up. Pokemon. 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 Uh, we had a conversation here, like, do we want to split this up into, like, mainline games uh, versus spinoffs um, or like remakes versus like new generation stuff. And A, we don't know Pokemon that well. And B, uh, it's kind of more fun to just look at it holistically of like, how has Pokemon performed on this thing? And from, I think the one thing you can dock the Switch generation for is the fact that the classic games are not available anywhere. Yeah. Other than that, from from my eyes, it has it's kind of incredible. You've got the spin-offs, you have new generations, you've had some remakes, you've had some experiments like Arceus and um even like the Let's Go. Yeah. Duo and then Duo and then you also have like new Pokémon Snap. Who thought Yeah, there would who thought we were going to get one of those Snap game. Yeah. Um and like the 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 remake of Rescue Dungeon, remember? Right. The Pokken Tournament, like DX, um, and then you know to say nothing of like the two new generations, which like I know Sword and Shield like it had its like uh, people liked it and its detractors, uh, but then Scarlet and Violet for being the like weird buggy mess that it is, um, is also just like an undeniably compelling package um, that like you know if they ever find a way to like make a technically uh sound game uh it's a uh, game over for everybody else um so yeah i mean it, it it's pretty impressive i do think that like it should be docked a little bit for the buggy mess that scarlet and violet is mm -hmm. 
But otherwise, I think that like Pokemon basically uh, presents itself as well as it could on on Switch. A minus? I think A minus. Yeah. And again, what do we know? We don't really play Pokemon. Uh, next up is uh, another sort of like question mark here. Uh, we're calling it the Princess Peach series. Now, admittedly, there's only been two entries in this series. Uh -huh. Super Princess Peach on the DS and the recent Princess Peach Showtime on Switch. A game that we both were like looking forward to. Uh, we're sort of enjoying it at the beginning, and by the end, I hated. But um, I don't know. What, what are you thinking here, Mark? This one just kind of makes me shake my head. Yeah. It, it, just such a missed opportunity. This, uh, I wonder what could have been, right? Like, yeah. is, it, is the performance of Princess Peach Showtime enough for it to be a franchise in the future? Do I, like, I don't really care if it becomes one. Yeah. I would be fine with it being a one and done, which is really disappointing. Well, and the thing is, if they were to make it into a franchise they would have to invent something fun for the next one to be, right? Like, right. They, they, they don't have, like, a sound base to iterate on um, from, from uh, Showtime. So I don't, like, I, like C minus, yeah, it's, maybe? I, I would almost give it a D, because it feels like a... It's a little bit the Donkey Kong thing, right? Of, like, squandering a... Squandered opportunity. Yeah. Just makes me frustrated. Um, yeah, makes me frustrated as well. Yeah, so I think I think D. Uh, all right, next up is uh, we're we're calling this the Punch Out series, uh, but it obviously gets wider than this, and it, it uh, grows to include, of course, the Virtual Boy Tellero Boxer, which I don't know why I keep bringing up, <laughs> but I do, and I'll never stop. And we are including arms in this, um, which is a stretch for the Punch Out series. Um, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> But it is fundamentally boxing based and like yeah. you're behind the character and there are like a, a cast of colorful characters that you battle against. Um, the original Punch Out, or at least the uh, um, the Mr. Dream version of Punch Out, is on Nintendo Switch Online, and the Super uh, Punch Out is on uh, Super NES, um, NSO, and then of course Arms is there. We're missing the uh, the Wii version of Punch Out, um, but that's not really surprising. Uh, how how do you think we should grade this one? In some ways, I think Arms is a miracle. Sure, that it exists, and I think it benefited from being again like a launch window. Yeah, title. I agree with this. Um, and that uh, Min Min becomes a Super Smash Brothers character is also like yeah, kind of a a crazy thing to keep in mind. You know, so I would say the fact that Arms exists you know, is as interesting as it is. And I think it, that is like a B territory. But because yeah. I don't really have expect, like, as in like, it could be B minus, it could be C plus. Like, right. I, I don't, the fact that it exists at all, to me, feels like a minor miracle. I don't have expectations that ARMS is going to continue in the future. But I do have an expectation that something like ARMS, like Punch-Out!, like Teleroboxer will show up in the future. I don't think ARMS killed that dream. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do think that's right, that ARMS didn't kill that dream. Um, but it also, like, it, it feels like such a... Uh, we're being generous in including it in, in the franchise, right? Um, but yeah, I guess it's also like, well, what else do I expect? Uh, we punch out was a, a surprise when it happened, right? Was like, a, oh... We're remembering that Punch Out exists, uh, so like, really, I shouldn't expect anything from that franchise. Well, I also think Punch Out is more like Western focused, yeah, and was always more popular outside of Japan than in Japan. And Nintendo is so Japanese focused that, like, yeah, I, I don't necessarily expect Punch Out to show up yeah. again. No, that 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 that's a good point, and that Arms like kind of reclaims that Japanese ness. Uh, in like its character design, uh, so maybe yeah, maybe maybe that's a, a little bit of a like cultural correction uh, on on Nintendo's part. So what do you think? C plus? I think C plus. Okay. Yeah. So now we have puzzle games, which uh, can take many forms: Tetris, Doctor Mario, historically Yoshi's Cookie, Wario's Woods, 
Everybody can't stop talking about Sushi Striker. We can't stop it. We will never stop talking about Sushi Striker, the way of the su- Sushido, um, which was like a, a launch window uh, game on uh, Switch and 3DS. Yep. I think we, we, we all want to forget that for some reason. <laughs> um, okay. So I'll bring my uh, dumb bias here uh, because uh, Tetris 99 is my game of the year every year since it came out. Um, it is the perfect execution of a Tetris game. Um, the rest of these, not really present anywhere except for on uh, Nintendo Switch Online, except, of course, for Sushi Striker. Um, but Tetris 99, and it being like a Nintendo exclusive thing, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like they're executing on this really, really well. Yes, the, uh, I agree. The only thing that I wish is I know we had Dr. Mario World on mobile. Right. But I like when they have a little fun with Dr. Mario and there was like Dr. Luigi uh-huh. on the Wii, like that sort of thing. Online I, RX. I, 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 wish that, I wish that we did see some fun twist on Dr. Mario show up as, on like Nintendo Switch Online or something like that. But it's hard for me to dock too many points. Right. I mean, just just with, with uh, Tetris 99, it, it makes it very... And I know, like, these aren't Nintendo-published uh, games, but the fact that Tetris Effect connected um, and uh, Tetris Forever is, is coming out shortly, um, it just feels like Tetris is well-represented on, on the platform. Yeah, Tetris 99 is doing a lot of heavy lifting it's Doing here. a lot of heavy lifting, yeah. A minus? I think B plus. Okay. Um, j- just because they're like, I do feel like you're right. It is missing like one more like real new entry. Um, it is funny that uh, we have the Dr. Mario on uh, Game Boy, on NES, and on <laughs> Nintendo 64. Um, and just, yet I demand more. <laughs> yeah, we demand Mario. more. <laughs> um, also, I said online RX because that's how it's stylized. Uh, I think that was the a, a Wii version of it. Is, should that be pronounced online prescription? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I guess maybe. I've never thought of I. I've never thought about that before. Get in I the, know that yeah. RX is a you know it means prescription, right? Yeah, but how would you say it out loud? Yeah. Somebody let us know. Yeah, let us know in the Discord or email us Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail dot com, uh, and let us know how we should be saying that. Uh, next up, a uh, sort of rhythmy game, rhythm game category. Obviously, you and I are fresh off of playing Elite Beat Agents, but we're putting Rhythm Heaven, Donkey Konga, and Elite Beat Agents in one bucket here. I am struggling. Is there any? Is there any? Has Nintendo published any rhythm games? On no, Switch? no, they have not. Which is odd, right? And we don't count. No, they did not develop them, but in at least at least in America, they've published those like fitness boxing games, but we do not count those. Right. No, okay. I, if anything, we should go back and apply them to the fitness uh, game category that we had last week. But I'm not, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> uh, so it, an, an incomplete? Possibly an incomplete. Um, it's, it is also like, not that rhythm games don't exist right now, but it does seem like the industry has moved on from the genre yeah generally speaking um like really the only big one i can think of right now is uh oh the 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 vr one where you're like what's it called i do know beat saber is what it's called um uh and you know nintendo is not in that space yeah square enix like had had the torch lit for a little bit they had the Kingdom Hearts one, and then a new Melody theme, of rhythm. Memories. That's, I am impressed. Uh, I, I, I pluralize it. I think it's just Melody of Memory. And then, yeah, the Final Fantasy Theat Rhythm Final Bar Line. But otherwise... Um, yeah, not Nintendo games. Yeah, so I think an incomplete. Or even an F. Yeah. Because I, I, I think maybe yeah. an F because I feel like we should get one. I feel like we should get one, too. It's interesting. Uh, after you and I recorded our Elite Beat Agents episode, um, we continue to talk about the game after we stopped recording because we are diseased and we can't stop uh, talking about Nintendo. Um, uh, and I was like, you know, it's weird. Usually when we play these sort of, like, forgotten games, uh, I have, like, a longing for them to, like, make a new one. And I just, like, Elite Beat Agents felt kind of, like, perfectly situated in its time and place. 
Um, I wouldn't say no to a new one, but I'm kind of like, do something else. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm missing is like, where is a rhythm game of some kind? Yeah. A rhythm game for the Switch generation. Exactly. Doesn't need to be a Donkey Konga. No. Doesn't need to be, it doesn't even need to be a rhythm heaven. No. But it's just a, like, of all the game types that Nintendo has covered, they've just kind of forsaken a rhythm game. Right. And Nintendo has such a, like, deep bench of music that they can have be tracks in these games where it's just like, yeah, why, why, why not? And so, an F. Uh, we give you an F on that one. Next up, Splatoon. The easiest A-plus we've ever discussed. Yeah. So good that Nintendo decided we're going to kind of break our own rule about doing sequels on a system. Yep. And we're going to put two of these out on Switch. Right. And obviously, uh, Splatoon is a uh, franchise that originates on Wii U um, and gained a lot of popularity there. Like, it is one of the genuine success stories of the Wii U. But, like, everything that made that game special is present in Splatoon 2. Uh, except for maybe, like, that specific hub world, which they then made DLC for Splatoon 3. Right. Uh, and both those games have, like, expansive uh, DLC single-player packs in addition to the single-player scenarios that went with them. The incredible uh, online Turf War stuff, Splatfest, S- Salmon Run. Uh, I, uh, Yeah, I mean, they, Splatoon has become one of the, like, core four franchises for Nintendo, uh, and it's, like, yeah, A+. plus. Yeah, when I was in Japan and went to, like, the Nintendo stores, like, the Splatling girl is... Inkling. Sorry, yeah, the yeah. Inkling girl is one of the main mascots. You go into a Nintendo store, it is a core franchise with Mario, Animal Crossing, and Zelda. Yeah. Like, it, hard to argue for any other grade uh, being being appropriate here, Also right? hard to see where the series goes from here, because Splatoon 3 is doing so much and has gotten so big. Yeah, yeah. I Well, and, like, it, you have to imagine that it's just going to be, like, something, you know, maybe, like, two years into uh, the new Switch's uh, life cycle that they're like, here's Splatoon 4, or, you know, whatever, whatever comes next. Um, but, yeah, I wonder if they'll do – they've done it every time. Uh, so I wonder if it'll be the same thing of like, here is a game with a lot of features, but a lot more that you know is going to be coming down, mm-hmm. down the pipe. Mm-hmm. Or if they're like, nope, here it is. It's huge and fully realized already. Who knows? Next on our list, Star Tropics. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> what expectations could you have of Star Tropics? I think getting both games on Nintendo Switch Online and the fact that Zoda's Revenge is not there, right? puts this in check-minus territory. It is definitely check-minus territory. Um, why not have Zoda's Revenge on there? Is it, it like, it, it... Yeah, it's not like the Donkey... It's not like Donkey Kong 64, where they're pr- probably saving it for a marketing beat. Right, <laughs> I right. think it's more of a, they just don't care. I think that's probably right. They just don't care, slash they forgot it exists. <laughs> yeah, that is very likely. <laughs> like, they, they put the first one out, but maybe, you know, it's, it's possible that, the, like, the second game is not called Star Tropics 2 Zoda's Revenge. It's called Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2, the real Emmy of the Smiling Man uh, situation there. Um, so, yeah, maybe they're just not alphabetically together, so they just <laughs> released the one Star Tropics game. And Zoda's all the way down at the bottom uh, of the All list. the way at the bottom. Uh, check minus. Uh, of course, uh, Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2 does get appropriately name-checked in uh, Nintendo World Championships NES Edition. So, faint praise on that one. <laughs> uh, check minus uh, basically a, a, a failure of, of representation here. Next up, Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, obviously, like, uh, when it started, like, really revealing itself to players at uh, E3 2019 uh, ran with a tagline. Everyone I think it might is have been here. 2018. You're right. Uh, 2018 is correct. Um, uh, but yes, a- everyone is here was the sort of uh, line that I was uh, dri- driving towards there. Um, in that, like, they released the ultimate version of Super Smash Brothers and then kept adding characters to it for years. The way that Ultimate dominated the conversation. Yes. Um, and the speculation. And vitriol over, you know, <laughs> all the different um, 
uh, DLC fighters is truly incredible. I it, it feels like an A plus. It feels like an A plus. I wanna I w- want to uh, submit one piece of evidence for a strike against it to knock it down to a category. Uh, where is Super Smash Brothers the Nintendo sixty four game? That's a good point. That's a good point. Where is it? Nintendo sixty four. Well, like that library. Basically, all the other first party games are there, with the exception of the Donkey Kong ones we talked about before. And now, just not Super Smash Brothers. What's happening? Yeah, what is happening? That it's said, con- it's uh, conceivable to me that yeah. for whatever reason they just never release it on Nintendo Switch Online. Bizarre. That said, and do you think it's the mm. online play part of it? Because oh, possibly. that is one of the features of all the Nintendo six, like any game on Nintendo Switch Online, yeah. is that there is some amount of online features, and for something like GoldenEye or Mario Kart 64, it is online play. You can play those games online with people, and like maybe that's the hang-up in getting right. Smash Brothers 64, is that that would become like an online game, and maybe it, it's just not... It's difficult to do that. Well, so speaking of that, Maybe we also need to bring up that, well, Smash Ultimate is the most fully featured version of this game. It does not really function as an online fighter the way that every other fighting game that's big right now does, right? Like, you cannot play it competitively online. It doesn't work that way. Um, The infrastructure is bad. There's no rollback uh, netcode. And it just, like... You can play it casually online, like that sort of works. Um, but like to play it as like a serious tournament fighter, you have to be like local. And they've just kind of given up yeah. on that to this point. You know, with each successive entry, the online has gotten better. But they're uh-huh. um but it it but seems still, like it seems like bad. they're never right. they they are not trying to reach you know, like online fighting right. game parody with the best. They're like, well, this is one area where good enough is good enough, and we're just gonna we're gonna leave it at that. Right, but it makes me wonder if we should be like, hey guys, that's not like you should apply yourselves. You made one of the like most fully featured uh, fighting games ever. Uh, why can't I play it online? And would it maybe physically kill Sakurai to get it working like that? Possibly. Uh, possibly, but also like he seems willing to die. He for seems his willing work. to die for us, right? He and Tom Cruise are both going to die <laughs> doing what they love, making what we love, uh, and so I think they should just commit to it. Okay, so so there are two strikes against the Smash Brothers series here. So a, I I can I can live with that. I think a a is appropriate. Knowing and like stating, by the way. A plus was within your within your reach. Right? right. Right. Okay. Next up, Wario Land. Hmm. I'm mad about this one. Hmm. I'm mad about this one. I think the only representation of Wario Land that we have is Wario Land 3 on the Game Boy Color. Yes, that's right. Which means there are Two other Game Boy ones that are, are not uh, uh, available on NSO, including um, Mario Land 3, Wario Land, um, and the Game Boy Advanced Wario Land 4, and then no new entry. This feels like either a check minus or a straight up F to me. I think it's an F because I, I kind of want to shame Nintendo yeah. into doing a new Wario Land game because I don't know that they have any intentions of doing so. Uh, and and why not? Because, like, we're going to get to WarioWare in a moment here, but there are two new WarioWare games, right? Like, why? They, they obviously still have Wario on the brain, but they're like, oh, we don't need him for, we don't need the style of platformer anymore. And when other developers are picking up that mantle, Pizza Tower just came out um, on uh, uh, the, the eShop. Um, Anton Blast is going to come out at some point. There are people who are trying to make their own versions of Wario Land, why is Nintendo not among them? Yeah. I would like to see this series return. So um, maybe this F will jolt them into action. Yeah. And if nothing else, you know, let's, there's three more games that should be on NSO. 
Three. <laughs> That's crazy. And if nothing else, it's the grade Wario would want. F for fart. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, WarioWare, I don't believe, is going to get an F for fart. Um, because it has actually had pretty diverse and interesting uh, uh, games, new games, on, on Switch, in addition to uh, WarioWare Mega Microgames Incorporated uh, being on um, NSO for the GBA. Um, so, yeah, we've got Get It Together and uh, Move It. Mo- is that right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, which are both, like, kind of slight games. They're short. Um, I remember getting through uh, Get It Together in, like, 45 minutes and being like, oh, yeah, that's and it. Get It Together is an interesting kind of, like, experiment on yes. the WarioWare formula. Um, and Move It is sort of a uh, uh, an expansion of the... Like uh, smooth moves, smooth moves concept from the Wii. On, from Wii, yeah. Um, but uh, but also like I don't think the WarioWare games have ever been that. I mean, these might be exceptionally short, but they've never been that long. They've yes, always been, yes. you know, the joy of them has always been multiplayer, really. Um, right, and playing it with friends. I will say neither of the Switch WarioWare games are as good as WarioWare Gold yeah, on the 3DS. Yeah, as good as I want them to be. Yeah. So I'm leaning towards, like, B. Or, I'm like, also, B minus. Which seems crazy, because they got two new games on the platform, I but know, I agree with you. I know. They're just not that exciting of entries. They're not that exciting of entries. Although, I, I gotta say, uh, you know, we, we busted out uh, WarioWare Move It at one of Connor's parties and had a blast. Like, it was really, really fun to play in a party setting. Um... So, yeah, I mean, I think B- is probably where uh, I, I, I land here as well. But, like, yeah, they're, they're fun to play. Um, I just wish uh, that there was, like, any kind of, like, real meatiness to either of them. Um, and then I guess there are other uh, classic games that they could be bringing. Um, I guess there's only one other. Uh, Twisted, right, for uh, Game Boy Advance? Right. Is another one that, that, that could be on there. Um, and then find a way to port gold. Come on. It's just so good. <laughs> All Next right. up. Yeah. Wave race slash 1080 snowboarding. We're combining these. Mm-hmm. Um, they follow a similar trajectory. Yep. Both show up on the Nintendo 64. Both show up on the GameCube. Wave race also has a Game Boy uh, Color game. Um, and then end of life. And then end of life for both series. And, you know, really, you could throw, like... Uh, Nintendo's other more quote unquote realistic sports in here, you know, sure. they Ken Griffey Jr.'s baseball, right? You know, like they used to do that, they used to make sports games that weren't uh Mario games, right? But they've, they've ice moved away hockey, from that. <laughs> right? Tennis, mm hmm. Um, so these are obviously the only representation we have for these are on uh the Nintendo 64, uh, Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, even though we could get that uh, Wave Race game on uh, the Game Boy. Oh, we could. They that should put it fun. in there. Um, I don't know. This one's challenging because this is just the Nintendo of the past that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, which makes it like hard to fault them for not uh, playing in the past. Yeah, it's almost like Nintendogs. Like, they're almost like exempt. Mm. Would you like to revive the uh, exempt status and apply it to Wave Race and 1080 snowboarding as well? It feels right. Like, I, I don't really want to, like, punish them or say they did a bad job here. Well, I guess here. the other thing we could do, other than the, um, well, we don't have the GameCube entries, but we do have the Nintendo 64 entries yeah. in both of them, right? Yeah. And so maybe it's a check minus a check? Yeah, maybe it's a check. Maybe like this is all we expect is yeah. like uh, for them to appear on NSO. When, and if they when put the Game Boy sense. Color on, game on there, maybe it'll be a, a check plus. plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, great. Um, next up, uh, we are doing the Wii Sports franchise, which Wii Sports, Wii Sports Resort, etc. We sport was there a Wii Sports Plus? What was I can't remember what the one on Wii U was called when they. Um, brought that franchise yeah. over i don't think there was a wii sports plus but whatever was called on wii u uh and then of course nintendo switch sports um which like game sold well is pretty good was never going to be the phenomenon that the original wii sports was right 
Yeah, and so it's not fair to grade it against Wii Sports. I think, and for, yet we must in some to some extent. Well, to some extent, but I feel like that it didn't have the cultural impact of Wii Sports. Right, is not really a fair comparison. Um, but I think for uh for coming in and being a new entry in that sort of game and finding a new angle on it. Right, right, like the, the online sports. focus. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I guess also the the new sports as well. But like that, so much of it is based around like pairing you up with randos online, um, and like finding ways to make even something like uh, bowling into like a, a not ninety nine, but like a ninety nine elimination kind of uh, scenario. Um, pretty cool and inventive and fun. Plus, like the catalog that would of uh, um, customizations. Yeah, that you could unlock. And having that update every month or so, like I think, and it's sold well. I think it's a pretty good showing. I would give Nintendo Switch Sports a B plus. I was gonna say straight B. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Nintendo Switch Sports has sold over 13 million copies. So like a successful uh and entry in 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 the franchise by by basically any any measure. Uh. All right. Nintendo Switch Sports. A straight up B. Next up, Xenoblade Chronicles. Another franchise that you and I aren't particularly tapped into. Although you love to buy them. I do love to buy. I didn't buy the third one. You haven't bought the third one I yet. I did not buy the third one. Um, why did you say yes? I don't know. I haven't done it. <laughs> um, uh, and I never bought the, uh, the DLC to get the... Um, what's the name of the... Uh, uh, Torna, the Golden Country. Oh, yeah. The, for... the, the two expansion. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, so, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, Torna, the Golden Country, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, basically everything but uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, the sort of like open world uh, Wii U game. Um, and th- another place where it seems like the franchise has picked up momentum um, to like the sort of mainstream audience level. Yeah, it seems like it definitely peaked with two. It Again, did. I think it benefited from being right. an early Switch title, but uh, Definitive Edition of the first game sold well, like for that franchise, over a million copies, and three also sold respectably. I think just on par with um, Definitive Edition, though, right? Like, I think the they discovered the ceiling the sales ceiling for Xenoblade Chronicles and that's uh what they've been able to deliver to at this point. I uh this doesn't go into the grading, but I'm just really curious if Xenoblade Chronicles as a series is over with three oh. and whatever Monolith work more Monolith Soft works on next would be a new series or maybe like Xenoblade something else. Like maybe Xenoblade is the part that carries forward. Sure. And Or maybe they'll just be a four. I don't know. Yeah, it could just be a four. Do you think it's possible that uh, we get a port of uh, X at some point? Maybe at some point. I feel like uh, they, they talked up technical reasons for not being able to port it or not wanting to spend the effort to do it. I'm not entirely... But it seemed like there it was like a technical It feels weird, though, because like the, the Wii U is not more powerful than the Switch. And but maybe it's the and I'm definitely talking yeah. out of my depth. But maybe it's like the architecture of the Wii U versus yeah, like be. the Switch and uh, X is I think like a big open world and so that's right. Yeah, I, I yeah I don't know why, but my memory is that there was some when asked about it, there was some sort of like technical reason that they said it would be difficult. Yeah, uh, and again, uh, we don't really know anything about it. So nope. Um, but yeah, I mean, h- hard to argue with the fact that uh, two like new entries in the series uh, came out on this platform, plus a remake of the original, uh, and like raised the profile of the thing. Uh, this is an A, I right? Think it's an A. It's like a Bayonetta situation, I think. That's right. Um, both in that we don't really know about it, <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like from an outsider perspective, yeah, like it's, it's pretty killing good. It. Yeah. Uh, shifting now to Yoshi. We have the one. We have the Yoshi one. We have game. Yoshi's Crafted World. From which 2019? E- yeah, probably right. Um, or 2018. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe it was early in 2019. Um, 
kind of a step down from Woolly World um, in, in my like memory of, of these games. Yoshi's Woolly World came out on uh, Wii U and then was later re-released, re-released on 3DS with Poochie in there. It's like part of the title. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World. Yoshi and Poochie's Woolly World, maybe, is the name of that game. Um, but that's a fun game with a lot of like cool different alternate color Yoshis. I've got those Yarn Yoshi Amiibos. They didn't release any uh, Amiibos for Crafted World. Crafted World isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but the things that it adds are like this sort of uh, like faux 3D effect and like going backwards through the levels from the other side, um, which is all like fine, but not really uh, revolutionary or not really that additive, I think. Yeah, this is a series that has never really spoken to me. Um, I didn't pick up Crafted World. Uh, uh, well, I've got to point out that um, uh, the Super Mario World to Yoshi's Island, and let's see if we can get it right, Super Mario Advance 3 Yoshi's Island uh, are both available uh, on um, Nintendo Switch Online. Did I get that the 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 advance one correct? Um, Super Mario Advance Three. Super Mario. Because one is two. I think two is World, and three is Yoshi's Island, and four is three. Super Mario Advance Three, Yoshi's <laughs> okay. Island. Got it. Got it. You okay, did get good. that right. Woo! But did I don't think Yoshi's. What is the Nintendo sixty four one story? Yoshi Story. Yeah, it is also on uh, NSO. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Thank oh, yeah, you for reminding is. me. Yeah. Um, so I almost defer to you on this one. Like, I want to give it a... My expectations for the Yoshi series are low. Sure. But that being said, I want to give it, like... C minus? Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's, that, that, that's where I am. Um, it's, it's not D, but, like, D territory, like, D adjacent for sure. Um, which brings us now to our final uh, class to uh, grade Nintendo on. Final subject that we're giving it a grade on. And Mark, what what haven't we talked about yet? Oh, just the Super Mario Brothers series. Just Super Mario. Now, have there been a few Super Mario games playable on Switch? Couple few. My God. So basically, classic is in terms of classics, we've got one Lost Levels, two, three, World, the four advanced games that I already said. Uh, land, land two, six golden coins. Uh, others, Mario sixty four. Uh huh. Uh, Sunshine in the form of mm-hmm. uh 3D All Stars. Galaxy in the form of 3D All Stars. 3D All Stars as a package, just generally speaking. Yep. Uh, uh, and then of like the 3D games, you have 3D World. Uh huh. Uh, and well, so uh, the the with this, talking about uh games from like. Earlier uh, generations, also the new Super Mario uh, U, uh huh, Deluxe, 3D World, you said, uh, and plus th- Bowser's Fury, plus Bowser's Fury, and then new games, right? So uh, Odyssey and Wonder and Mario Maker Two and Super Mario Maker Two, pretty well represented. Odyssey and Wonder are world class games. I would say Odyssey in in particular is yeah like, definitely uh, su- such an incredible entry in in the series. Hard not to say a plus here, right? I think Mario Mario has done well for himself on the Switch. Where do you think is there a dimension in which like Mario games are missing from this platform in a way that they shouldn't be? We just listed like a hundred games, <laughs> right? That are there. Obviously, Galaxy Two not present. Uh huh. Um, the 3DS games not present. So New Super Mario Brothers Two, right? Actually, the the rest of the New Super Mario Brothers series. Yeah, right. That's in, right. In its entirety. Yeah. Yep. Uh, three Three D Land also right. not present here. Right. But otherwise, it's a pretty good showing. It's a it's pretty, a pretty good exhausted showing. Yeah. showing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But like you said, even on its own. Odyssey is incredible. Yeah. I mean, on, honestly, if just Odyssey were on the Switch, if we were having this conversation at the end of 2017, I'd be like, A+. Plus. Yeah. The game's so good. Yeah. It's another one where you're like, what? How are they going to top this? How yeah. are, what are they going to do next? And I, I can't wait to find out. Right. But it, and then Wonder feels like it, it 
could be the start of something new, or it could be a one-off. And that's exciting to me. Like Bowser's Fury. Yeah. Frankly. Uh, yeah. And like, it is just nuts that like Super Mario 3D World is a game that I've played to completion I don't like five times now. Like <laughs> it's become a pretty regular thing. We haven't replayed uh, 3D World in a long time, by which I mean like a year and a half. <laughs> Might be time to do it again. Yeah. yeah so I, I think an easy A plus. Yeah. Uh, all right, Mark. Should we review? That was our our final uh, franchise that we are are grading here. Should we review these grades? Yes. We'll start with Star Fox, which gets a check minus. And then uh, Mario Sports of the non-karting variety gets a B minus. Mario versus Donkey Kong squeaking in with a C. Metroid gets an A, but not an A plus. Nintendo Dogs is exempt. <laughs> yeah, no grade given. <laughs> um, Pikmin A plus. Way to go, Pikmin. Pilot Wings a check. We give it a check. What else do you want? Uh, Pokemon, we're giving it an A minus. Oh, Princess Peach a uh. D. That's a, you, you hate to see it. Uh, Punch Out gets a C plus because of arms, basically. Puzzle Games get a, gets a B plus off the back of Tetris 99. Uh, the Rhythm Games uh, get an F. There are none. Wherefore art thou, Rhythm Games? Where art thou, Owen Don 3? <laughs> uh, Splatoon, an A plus. An easy A plus, right? Uh, Star Tropics, we're giving you a check minus Star Tropics. Where's Zoda's Revenge? Super Mario... Uh, Super Smash Bros. Yeah, there we go. An A. Uh, which uh, also, where is uh, Smash Brothers for Nintendo 64? Uh, Wario Land, you get an F. You get one classic game, not enough. Yeah, we hope this is a wake-up call, Nintendo. Yeah. WarioWare. Where your parents need to sign that. <laughs> Send it back in. WarioWare, a B-. Uh, Wave Race and uh, 1080 Snowboarding, we're just giving a check. The Nintendo 64 game. A respectable, like a nod of the head. A nod of the head. We may, acknowledge it. Maybe a more uh, a, a more cheerful check if the Game Boy Color game that's <laughs> right shows up on there. Uh, Wii Sports, you know, like Nintendo Switch Sports, a B. Xenoblade Chronicles, an A. Yoshi, a C minus. And Super Mario, an A plus. All right, Mark, let's close this out. As before, would uh, be very interested to hear what people think about how we graded these things, if we inflated the importance of anything, if we misunderstood the importance of something else, uh, and, you know, just get in the Discord and uh, tell us how we don't know anything about Pokemon or Xenoblade or Bayonetta if you want to go back a week. <laughs> uh, but I, I, think we made, I think we made good calls there, don't you, Mark? I think so, too. Okay, great. Um, uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Thank you to our 16-bit patrons, Connor McCabe, Patrice Millette, and Kyle Seaborn. We appreciate you. We appreciate everyone who is listening to this show. Uh, if you're not already in the Discord, you should get in there. Email us. We will send you an invitation. Anthony DeLuca made our logo, and our theme music is provided by 8 Betty. You can get more of his music by going to 8bitbetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thank you for listening. Thank you.